cross-examination of the social worker. Hi, my name is Vince Davis, and I'm an attorney for 31 years, and I'm an expert in the area of CPS cases, otherwise known as juvenile dependency cases here in California. Come with me while I explain one of the most important uh, parts of a CPS case, and that is cross-examination of the social worker during any type of contested hearing or trial. You know... As I travel around the state of California, one of the things that I notice is that there aren't a lot of trials and they're not, and when they do have trials, a lot of people aren't cross-examining the social worker. Well, that's probably the most important part of any contested hearing or any trial. Here's how you do it. Number one, you have to make sure that you and your attorney have requested that the social worker be present at the trial or contested hearing. A lot of times I see this happening in court. Uh, Mr. Davis, call your first witness. Uh, I'd like to call the social worker, Your Honor. And then the county counsel, the attorney for the social worker says, Mr. Davis didn't subpoena or ask that the social worker be present. How are you going to cross-examine a social worker if they're not present? So the first thing you got to do is you got to make sure you and your attorney subpoena uh, the social worker to be present. Now in California there is an easy way to do that. There might be uh, similar ways to do this in other states, but in California there's something called Co California Code of Civil Procedure, section 1987. If you read that statute, and just Google CCP 1987, if you read that statute, it says that if you want to subpoena a party to the case, which the social worker is, you can just send out a notice of a CCP 1987 to all of the attorneys. You don't even have to file it. You don't have to serve them or serve that social worker witness in person. There are time limits, though. I believe if you want somebody to appear in person, you have to do it uh, 10 days before and you have to personally serve all of the attorneys or you have to notice them 15 days by mail. So 15 days before the trial you send out a CCP 1987 notice to all of the attorneys and that requires people listed in that um, 1987 request to be present. I think that it's officially called a notice pursuant to subpoena. Now what I do in a lot of cases is I list the social workers also. I list the children who I want to testify because these people are all parties to the case. I list the other parent just in case I need to call that parent as a witness. And I send these out via mail more than 15 days before the court hearing and then everybody has on that list has to be present at court at 8.30 in the morning, unless they've talked to me and arranged another time or date to appear. A CCP 1987 is as good as personally serving a subpoena to the social worker. Now, a lot of people in a lot of counties, they have what they call subpoena control officers, where you don't have to serve the subpoena personally on the social worker you can serve the subpoena control officer. Usually subpoena control officers are at each office or it's someone in their attorney's office, the county council. I know here in Los Angeles County they have a paralegal who is the designated subpoena control officer and if you deliver a subpoena to him uh, it is just like personally serving the social worker which would compel the social worker to, uh, to come. And if you want a child to be present um, I don't think you can serve children, but you can serve their uh, guardian or caretaker um, or their parent, and you can serve them with a subpoena to compel them to bring the child to court. So for example, if I wanted a minor to be present um, and I was having difficulty with uh, arranging that with the social worker or the minor's attorney, um, I would just serve the foster parent. 
uh, with the subpoena. And sometimes that's difficult because now you don't know the address of where the foster parent is living with your child. So those are the ways that, that those are the first steps you got to do to make sure that the social worker is present. Number two, when you call the social worker as a witness, it is extremely important to be professional and courteous with the social worker, even if you hate the social worker, okay? Because you're putting on a production for the benefit of the judge who's going to be making the decision in your case. And if you're going to be an a-hole about it, the judge subconsciously or consciously is not going to take what you're saying seriously, all right? So when you put the, the, the social worker on the stand, the first thing I always say is, good morning, good afternoon, sir, ma'am. And I'm extremely courteous throughout my, my entire cross-examination. So I suggest that when you cross-examine a social worker, that you don't show your disdain for the social worker, but that you be professional and courteous. The next thing that you want to do is you want to get out all of the social worker's major themes. For example, ma'am, isn't it true that you are not recommending the child be returned to my client today? Yes. The next question should be, tell me all the reasons why. Now notice, that's different from saying, why aren't you recommending it? Tell me all the reasons. And one time, a couple times I've done this, I've asked the judge to approach the witness and I've handed the, um, the witness a yellow pad, a blank yellow pad and a pen. And I say, Madam Social Worker, please list all of the reasons why you are not returning the child to my client. Think about that. That might be a hard thing to do. In their mind, they may have a hundred reasons why they don't want to return the child. But it's important because if you make them write it down, you tear that piece of paper off and you use it in your cross-examination and then you file it with the court clerk as a piece of evidence. Get it? Okay. So here, here's the reason. Here, here's what some social workers say. Well, I don't think the, social, the, um, the mother can take care of the child or keep the child safe. And then they give another reason and another reason and another reason. And of course, they're writing these down for you or you're taking notes. After they've given all the reasons, I say, is that all the reasons that you have? Are those all the reasons that you have? Sometimes the social worker will say, oh, there's a couple more. Well, what are they? And then they'll list them. And I always try to frame it so that they are stuck to those three reasons or five reasons or ten reasons. And then what you have to do is you have to go back to each reason and you have to do what they call a drill down. You have to go into the, the specifics of why they said that. So, for example, if the social worker says, because I don't think the mother can keep the child safe, you go back to that question at the end and say, okay, madam, tell me, please tell me why you don't think the mother can keep the child safe. Well, if you think about that question, in a lot of cases, that's a difficult question to answer. Because a lot of times people just have, like social workers, they just have gut level feelings. Well, in trials and in contested hearings, you, ha you have to have more than gut level feelings. You gotta have some facts. You gotta have some evidence to support your conclusion. And for a lot of witnesses, it's very difficult for them to articulate those facts. Therefore, you can argue to the judge at the end of the case that the social worker didn't have any real facts to say that the child, or that, to say that the mother couldn't keep the child safe. You get it? Okay. Here, let me give you an example of how important cross-examination cross -examination of the social worker is. This was a case where um, I represented a grandmother in New York and who happened to be from Jamaica. And uh, she was trying to get three grandchildren here in Los Angeles placed with her. And the social worker, she just wouldn't place the children with her. Uh, I don't know why. 
I didn't know why. I found out why in the cross-examination. Why cross-examine this worker using the steps that I just showed you? And she gave all the reasons, all the right reasons, why the children shouldn't be placed with the grandmother. Yeah, there could be a lot of reasons. And you'd be surprised what social workers will say. Well, at the end of the cross-examination, I had a feeling, you know, with the witness that she wasn't telling me something, but she had done a perfect job of testifying. And I'm kind of getting looks from the judge like, hmm, sorry, Davis, you know, uh, I'm probably not going to ruin your favor. Now, the judge didn't say this. This is just the feeling I got from the looks he was giving me. Well, at the end of my cross-examination, I asked her one last question. I said, ma'am, just between you and I, and, I, and you know, I'm sitting in a courtroom full of people, just between you and I, what's the real reason? Now, what's the real reason why you won't place these children with grandmother? Now, you have to keep in mind the context in which this happened. She had done a perfect job answering my cross-examination questions. She had obviously been prepared by the, so the county council and the county council on this case was a very experienced, very talented county council. And he must have prepared her, and he must have told her, you know, this is what Davis is going to do, because, you know, it's my playbook, you know, it's not a secret. And uh, she was prepared. And I asked her, now remember, she feels emboldened. What's the real reason why you don't want to place these children with the uh, grandmother in New York? She kind of sat back. Like, okay, I'm going to give you the real reason because, you know, I'm, I'm badass. I did perfectly in your cross-examination. And she looked around the courtroom as if to get the attention of everyone sitting there. And she said, well, the real reason is because your client is Jamaican and everybody knows that Jamaicans are drug dealers. Can you believe this? This is about 10 years ago, 15 years ago. And the judge just turned and looked at her on the witness stand. He stood up and he walked off the bench. The county council, I looked at him and he just had his head in his hands like, I can't believe this. You know, like, I prepared her, everything was perfect, and she just couldn't help herself. Needless to say, we won that uh, trial. Uh, and the children were placed with the grandmother uh, in, uh, in New York. And for many years, I used to get a Christmas card from her every Christmas uh, that included a picture of the kids. And apparently, the kids were doing really well being raised by their grandmother in New York. I was raised by my grandmother, so you know I kind of had a soft spot. But that's the importance of cross-examination. At some point, even though you have a playbook, you're going to make a connection with a witness. And you need to go with your feeling and your, your, your skill when you cross-examine these social workers. Now, most of the people listening to this tape or this video, uh, you're, you're not attorneys. But you can mention this or discuss this with your attorney. I am almost positive that every attorney that does these types of cases likes to win and likes to get children back to their families and to their parents and their relatives. You're probably watching this video because you have questions, questions about your CPS case. Well, I answer questions like this every day. If you're interested, please give me a call for a free consultation. 888-888-6582 or listen to my show, The Secret, How to Fight CPS and Win on Saturday evenings on KABC 790 AM uh, talk radio in Los Angeles or live streamed at um, kabc.com. It's live streamed internationally. Do me a favor, give me a like on this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel so I can keep doing these uh, short videos for you and help you in these cases. My goal 
Um, I just came up with this goal. My goal was try to help a million people, a million families, defeat DCFS. And I can't do that by myself. My law firm can't do it. The best way I can do it is doing these videos and try to help you when you watch these videos. Thank you again, and we'll see you on the next video.